This is the final module in this three-part series on sleep neurophysiological dynamics through the lens of multi-taper spectral analysis. In the previous modules, we presented spectral analysis as an improvement over sleep staging as a means of analyzing sleep EEG data. We then discussed some different methods of spectral estimation, including the bias and variance limitations of the periodogram and single taper spectral estimates. Finally, we introduced multi-taper spectral analysis as a way of improving both bias and variance, greatly improving the frequency resolution for characterizing the EEG signal. We also talked about the principled approach to determining the multi-taper parameters. Now that we understand what multi-taper spectral analysis is and have this way of visualizing EEG data, how can we use it to characterize the activity during sleep? This module will focus on this question, and by the end of this module, you will be able to interpret the sleep EEG multi-taper spectrogram and identify wake, REM, and non-REM sleep stages, as well as some other sleep architecture elements, and appreciate the strengths of using multi-taper spectral analysis as a clinical tool for studying and assessing sleep. Recall, in the spectrogram, the x-axis is time, the y-axis is frequency, measured in hertz, and the color is power. Here is how we can use the multi-taper spectrogram to analyze the sleep EEG, whereas in traditional time domain scoring, we look for an 8 to 12 hertz oscillation in the waveforms to indicate the presence of alpha waves, the spectrogram reveals a strong band of power in the 8 to 12 hertz range. Likewise, power in other bands, such as delta, theta, and sigma, can be determined in the spectrogram. While it takes skill and guesswork to accurately identify a particular frequency by eye within an EEG waveform, the spectrogram objectively tells us the frequency content at each point in time. Moving forward, we will use this approach to quickly identify key spectral signatures related to important features of sleep architecture. Here is the hypnogram and multi-taper spectrogram for an entire night of sleep data. Without knowing much about what the spectrogram means, you can already observe repeating motifs throughout the night that correspond with wake, REM, and non-REM sleep. What is really important about this is that it is a way of observing sleep data instantly across an entire night. If you were to just look at the time domain waveform traces, other than changes in amplitude, there is almost nothing you can observe at this time scale. This also helps illustrate why the 30 second window for RNK scoring may persist. We really cannot look at data much longer than that because the waveform compresses, merging everything together so we can't really identify much. Without spending any time scoring data, the multi-taper spectrogram gives us a single, objective visualization of an entire night's worth of sleep data. These are a couple hypnograms and spectrograms from two different test subjects. You can observe that while there is some heterogeneity between them, overall, you can see common repeating patterns that align with the traditional sleep scores of wake, REM, and non-REM sleep. What we will now show is that with these multi-taper spectrograms, we can see everything we need for traditional RNK scoring. In addition, they provide a means for easy visualization at different time scales, whether this is a full night, which is on the time scale of hours, ultra -dian, or stage level, which is on the scale of minutes, and micro-event level, which is on the time scale of seconds. Let's go through the different sleep stages and explore what the multi-taper spectrogram looks like for each stage. Here is an example of wake EEG data. At the start, the subject is awake with their eyes open. Except for some very low frequency activity, there isn't much. The second they close their eyes, we see the occipital alpha, a very strong oscillation between 8 and 12 hertz, and this signal persists for a long time. You may also see this alpha harmonic, a low-powered ghost-like pattern of the alpha oscillation. The alpha harmonic is an artifact created due to the fact that alpha waves are not perfectly sinusoidal and you may expect to see it in the spectrogram. At the point noted, 
you see that the subject starts to fall asleep as the alpha fades and the spectrogram changes, showing more power in the delta and theta range. Moments later, they have an arousal, noted by the temporary reappearance of the alpha. This is quiescent wake as they are lying down and falling asleep. But a lot of what you see at the beginning of the sleep record looks like this. Eyes open, eyes closed with alpha, but you also see these strong vertical bands representing motion artifacts as the EEG system gets moved or the subject moves. Every time you see this broadband noise with strong low frequencies in a vertical line, it lets you know that some motion has occurred. Now let's look at non-REM. Here's an example of classic non-REM sleep, where the subject is 100% in N1, transitions to N2, and then N3. In the spectrogram, rather than discrete changes in non-REM states, you see a continuum of change. At the start, you have the eyes closed alpha of wake that disappears once the subject falls asleep. What you observe for the rest of non-REM is a strong, steady growth of delta power. After delta increases a bit, you start to see sigma power, where spindles reside. Sigma power is high during N2, but then slowly decreases. As sigma starts to decrease, we see an increase in theta power. Overall, the first stage of non-REM sleep is marked by the disappearance of alpha. Stage 2 is marked by a rise in the delta and sigma power and the appearance of spindles and K-complexes. Stage 3 is marked by a reduction in spindles in the presence of strong slow waves. Consider this a snapshot of the non-REM spectral motif we will expect to observe during sleep. We will see this motif repeating throughout the sleep record. Even within non-REM sleep, there can be periods of arousal like shown in this case. We can see our typical non-REM spectral motif shown as segment 1. Then, suddenly there is an arousal. Upon arousal, non-REM resets to the beginning and our spectral motif appears again, noted as segment 2. The motif can be longer or shorter, but the progression of the pattern remains. The pattern can also be reversed, like shown in segment 3. This is a lightening of non-REM sleep. The delta decreases, the theta grows and fades away, and the sigma increases. Therefore, in non-REM, what you can expect to see is the spectral motif flipped in different directions, scaled in different ways, and mediated by either an arousal or lightening of sleep. By understanding this, we can observe fragmentation in non-REM sleep. Non-REM is also marked by micro-events such as spindles and K-complexes. Spindles have traditionally been something difficult to observe and detect, and there isn't a clear definition of what spindles are. This is mainly because spindles are difficult to see in the time domain. However, with the multi-taper spectrogram, we can magnify the sigma band and start to observe these transient bursts of power, which are the spindles. We can further magnify to isolate individual spindles, which we can look up in the time domain. Sleep spindles can also overlap each other and be at different frequencies. This is very difficult to discern within the time domain with a high level of certainty, but within the spectrogram, we can clearly see the division of spindles at different frequencies and times. We can similarly isolate K-complexes quite easily within the multi-taper spectrogram. K-complexes are transient low-frequency oscillations that reflect brief periods of reduced cortical neuronal activity, or so-called downstates. K-complexes occur spontaneously during non-REM and appear in the spectrogram as broadband, low-frequency activity. In summary, what is very difficult to observe in the time domain can be very easy to observe in the spectral domain and on a much larger timescale. Moving on to REM sleep. In terms of RNK scoring, REM doesn't have a lot of features associated with it in the EEG. It is generally observed as an activated EEG with sharp waves, but it's really not a very clear pattern to identify from the EEG trace alone. REM is mainly discerned 
from the presence of rapid eye movement, as well as low power with transient bursts of muscle activity in the EMG. However, in the multi-taper spectrogram, what we can observe is very distinct. During REM and leading into REM, what we see is called peri-REM alpha bursting. Here's an example of someone going into REM sleep. The spindles disappear, the low frequency power drops, and the bursts of power start appearing in the alpha band. At the end of REM, the bursts disappear and our non-REM motif starts to appear. It is very important to note that this alpha bursting appears before scored REM while there is still non-REM sigma power and it continues after scored REM. This means that peri-REM alpha bursts are a predictor of traditional scored REM. Moreover, it shows that REM is neither a single or binary state as there is a gradual evolution of these features over time. While these bursts have been previously studied in detail, this continuous and predictive quality has not been described in this manner. This is perhaps because it has been difficult to look over this timescale using traditional visual analysis of the time domain waveforms. By using the multi-taper spectrogram, we have revealed important aspects of the REM sleep EEG difficult to discern otherwise. Here's another example where we clearly see the distinct peri-REM alpha bursting pattern. Below the spectrogram, we are also showing data on the eye movement during this time. This highlights the potential linkage between some of these peri-REM alpha bursts and phasic REM sleep, during which eye movements occur. We now know what the stages of sleep look like in the multi-taper spectrogram of the EEG. However, we can use the spectrograms of other signals as well to help us with sleep analysis. For example, we can look at muscle activity during sleep using an EMG spectrogram. For example, here's the chin EMG signal as a spectrogram. The chin is one of the first muscles to change tone as someone falls asleep. When awake, the EMG spectrogram shows very strong broadband activity. During REM, on the other hand, we only see these little intermittent bursts of activity in the muscle. This data can provide us with additional information to help us identify what stage of sleep someone is in and what is occurring in the sleep continuum. Here is a brief summary of the dynamics we observe in the EEG multi-taper spectrogram for the wake, non-REM, and REM sleep stages. Let's practice using the sleep spectrogram to identify the sleep stage. Here's a full night of sleep data presented as the multi-taper spectrogram. For the period identified in the spectrogram, what stage of sleep is the subject in? So, in only a matter of minutes, you are able to score a subject's sleep architecture for an entire night using the multi-taper spectrogram. 
a process that may have taken experienced sleep analysts an hour to score in the traditional time domain. How is all this useful clinically? Well, using the multi-taper spectrogram, you can instantly assess sleep architecture and fragmentation in a single, full-night visualization without sleep scoring. This is useful in certain clinical estimates, but you need to have a rapid estimate of the total sleep time. This includes the multiple sleep latency test and split-night studies. The multi-taper spectrogram also provides increased feature space for phenotyping different disorders. Finally, the spectrogram also provides us with a much improved basis for performing automated analyses of sleep. Here's an example highlighting the use of the spectrogram to analyze clinical data. 16 sleep records were assessed. 8 were considered simple cases and 8 were difficult cases such as severe cases of apnea or limb movement disorder. One expert scored the cases from the EEG spectrogram alone. Meanwhile, a technician independently scored the cases traditionally using only the time domain waveform. There was no significant difference between the two methods in the three-stage scoring of the data. Furthermore, there was no significant difference computing the AHI-RHI severity. This means that the same clinical diagnosis could be arrived at whether using the time domain or spectral domain scoring. In addition, scoring of the spectrogram took significantly less time than the scoring of the time domain waveform. The expert also trained three technicians in the spectrogram scoring approach. Here's one subject's sleep data along with the official technician scored hypnogram using the traditional sleep staging approach. Now, here's the scoring performed by the three newly trained technicians using the spectrogram. Notice how close the three newly trained technicians' hypnograms resemble the hypnogram from the traditional sleep staging approach. It should be noted that it typically takes several years to train a sleep technician to score with an acceptable level of accuracy. In this study, the technicians received only a few hours training using materials nearly identical to these modules. The new trainees were also asked to score the apnea hypopnea indices for 10 cases. This graph shows the official apnea score as a star and the scores of the three newly trained technicians as colored dots. The results show that for the most part, these newly trained technicians were able to quickly learn and apply the scoring approach clinically. Finally, the multi-taper spectrogram can also help improve our understanding of apnea. Apnea is thought primarily as an autonomic thing and how it affects a person's heart as they fall asleep. However, there are real effects to the brain when a person stops breathing throughout the night. Here's an example of a subject who continuously stopped breathing over the course of the night. What we observed is these bursts of activity as they fell asleep and then were woken up from not breathing. As a result, it shows that it is not just an impact on a person's physiological system, but is something that is occurring within the brain, and the brain is not experiencing normal sleep during these moments. This is a concept that people have mentioned, but it hasn't been fully explored yet. In summary, multi-taper spectral analysis is an improvement over the traditional sleep staging approach to characterizing the sleep EEG. Multi-taper spectral analysis is high resolution, accurate because it is completely objective, flexible because it is data-driven, and it can be fully automated. Furthermore, it appreciates that sleep is a continuum, not a series of discrete stages. The multi-taper spectrogram contains a wealth of information on the dynamic architecture of sleep, far beyond that contained in the hypnogram. In addition, it is much easier and faster to learn how to identify the stages of sleep with the spectrogram than it is from the time domain waveform. Therefore, with all these benefits, why not read the multi-taper spectrogram instead of the hypnogram?